We're outside of my shop in beautiful central New York. I want to take a moment to talk about BikeCAD software, what it is, why I love it so much. It's cold outside, let's go in. I bought a license of BikeCAD software in I believe 2012 and I've used it a lot. It is such useful software, and I think sometimes people don't realize how incredibly valuable it is because there are other ways to derive the kinds of things that people most commonly associate with BikeCAD. So you could do on a uh, like a drafting table, like an architect's table. You know, you can draw a full-scale drawing of a bicycle, and then you can measure point to point all the different things that you need. You could also um, design and, and model up a bike in traditional like 2D or 3D CAD software, and then you could derive the, the measurements and angles and things you needed. You could also design it, uh, you know, around someone's fit and, and like a fit cycle. When I took Doug Faddock's frame building class, he had designed a frame fixture where you didn't need CAD software or a full scale drawing. You could set it up based on the fit dimensions. And so I think there are other ways to do it. I think BikeCAD is the best way to do it. BikeCAD is something like $500 for a license and you have it forever. It is supported by, uh, I think, Linux, Windows, and Mac operating systems. Brent Curry, who makes and designs it and sells it, is a solid human. I really like him. He's a good guy. I always talk to him at the trade shows. He makes a lot of YouTube videos explaining the features and functionality of the software and how you get the most out of it. They also have a free version of it on the website website that I know I used before I bought it and you could probably get done a lot of the things that you would need to get done just with that free version although I would say the full version from from it's been a long time since I've used the free version but I think the full version is pretty well worth it uh, if you're taking seriously making more than just a bike or two but what basically what it allows you to do is you can punch in numbers that are rider centric and bike centric and so you don't need to already know you know you, you don't need to know any relationships or angles or measurements that you wouldn't already know so if you go to you know uh, specialized bikes website and you look at the whatever model bike that they have they'll tell you things like you know your your uh, top tube length and your seat tube length, your bottom bracket height, chainstay length, fork rake, axle to crown on your fork, all that stuff. Those are the kinds of dimensions you work with with BikeCAD. Those are like very straightforward dimensions that we're used to thinking about. And you can set up parametric models in other CAD software that allow you to enter that kind of data, but it's just a whole lot of screwing around. And I don't think it's ever going to be quite as polished and slick as it is with BikeCAD. And I would say, even if you do want to make a 2D or 3D model of your bike in another software, I think it's the easiest to just start in BikeCAD and get your model and figure out your main dimensions and then use that model to, to fill in uh, data points in other CAD software if you were going to make a 3D model. So what I'll do is I'll be thinking about my rider that I'm making the bike for, their fit dimensions and their size. I'll be thinking about the kind of bottom bracket you know, height that I want for pedal clearance. I'll be thinking about chainstay length for tire clearance. I'll be thinking about all those things and I quickly come up with a model. When I tweak one dimension like the top tube length, everything else adjusts around it. You know, try doing that with your uh, with your full scale drawing. You, you make a full scale drawing of the bike for somebody and then part way through you realize actually you don't want to do it that way. You want to change the bottom bracket height or something and that's yeah, you can, you can get it done, but it's just a very tedious um, way to do things. And I feel like when, when there is friction in the process that you have that would make it annoying to get things right, to go back and say, well, you know, I'm already done designing it, but actually I, I didn't remember that I should do this thing. I feel like that is going to incentivize you to not do your best work. And when you have software that makes it easy for you to get the design just right, really play with the design and do multiple iterations, you're going to come up with better designs, you're going to make better bikes, and uh, for, that, for those reasons alone, it's really valuable. Then within BikeCAD, uh, it spits out all the measurements. So in my frame fixture video, I explained how I have five variables for my frame fixture and they all are spit out directly from BikeCAD. Well, one of them is just subtraction. It's the C-tube angle minus the head tube angle. But I have like a weirdo fixture design that not everybody else uses. And I looked through all the outputs in the fixture setup tab, and lo and behold, there were ones that actually fit my sort of design. It's a pretty straightforward idea, but there aren't other fixtures exactly like mine. 
and yet it was supported by BikeCAD, and I have a pretty good sense that if I would have emailed Brent and I would have said, hey, I don't see the outputs that I need. In fact, I think I did email him about that, and he pointed out the ones that I needed. That's how that went. But, uh, but Brent would be, I think, uh, for a customer, willing to make a simple addition uh, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but when I've asked him about those sorts of ideas, I had an idea for a tool once and I said I would need custom outputs that are based on simple trigonometry functions. Could you include that in the next version of BikeCAD if I gave you the information for the formulas? And he said, sure. Um, is that kind of person that I'm really happy to do business with, really happy to get the support. Every time I've emailed him, he responds very quickly and he's very happy to help. He points me in the direction of a YouTube video or something. Uh, I think oh, one thing that's cool is in the um, you can do logos and graphics and uh, he makes it really easy to insert your own company's name into the uh, collection of logos on there and so I've done that and now when I make a bike and I want to you know if I show it to uh, the person I'm making the bike for a customer they can see it says the Cobra on the down tube like what a cool touch that uh, you know like it's I just had to email him my, my artwork and then he put it in there and so um, yeah, just really useful and really good kind of person to do business with. Um, so, so when you go to miter the tubes, you need to know where to drill for water bottle holes. You need to know exactly how long to miter. And there's all sorts of different ways to miter the tubes. So there's center to center measurements. But if you don't have a slick uh, mitering setup that, that lets you uh, slide a carriage to a center to center you know, spot, then you're gonna have to know from actually the insides of the, the miter cuts along the top or the bottom of the tube, you're gonna need to know that distance and BikeCAD gives you those dimensions and it's just a, you know, it's a checkbox and a dialog box, you just check it and then it shows up on the screen. And so you could design your bike and if you made bikes routinely in a similar sort of way with a similar sort of process, you could have your like 25 dimensions or whatever it was that you needed to have in your mind as you're building the frame and you could have, uh, you could make like sort of a printout so that every time you made the bike, you could print out a list of all the salient, uh, salient, yeah, all the salient like dimensions and stuff so that, uh, so that you, you could walk around your shop and you could make your rough cuts here and then you could set it up and you could miter this end and that end and then now your tube is mitered and you didn't have to go back to the computer 15 times. You didn't need to do any extra math. It was just very straightforward. Um, Tom Lipton likes to say workmanlike fashion, right? Just like you're just going through the motions in a very straightforward way. Uh, when you talk to people who work in construction, who you know build houses and different things, they always talk about having a cut list. So when you go to the chop saw, don't cut one piece and then walk back and take another measurement, but like make a cut list and then do everything up front. And I think BikeCAD lends itself to that sort of process. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. There's another thing I didn't know about for a little while. You can do a point-to-point -point measurement. So you can anywhere in BikeCAD, you can right-click and you can start a point-to-point -point measurement and then you can drag somewhere else and right-click again and you can end your point-to-point -point measurement. And so if BikeCAD doesn't already have in the dialog boxes for dimensions, if it doesn't tell you exactly uh, how long whatever dimension it is you need is, then you can just draw a point and it'll, it'll measure that for you. There's also an auxiliary stay view. So for the rear end of the bike, if you're doing a traditional road bike with skinny tires, you maybe don't need to worry that much about it, but as you get into mountain bikes and cyclocross bikes and things with bends or multiple bends in the stays where you're really worried about you know, crank arm, chain ring, tire clearance, that sort of thing, it really can be helpful to uh, look at that auxiliary stay view and get a sense of where things are lying in space and then manipulate the bends and that sort of thing. Uh, that's a tricky thing to do with a simple user interface and I would say that's not the strongest point of BikeCAD. I don't have the newest version. I don't think it's any different in the newer version. Um, but it's certainly good enough that you can design most of the things you would need to reasonably well without needing to learn or buy more sophisticated CAD software. And it's really pretty quick and user-friendly to design that sort of stuff. Another really cool feature of BikeCAD is you can get like a, a good sort of 
visual rendering of things. You can output uh, you can output stuff as a PDF, and I think maybe some other file types that are actually vector graphics that are scalable. So you could then import them into Illustrator or something, and you could apply more sophisticated graphics. But uh, even just being able to select the colors of different parts, you can make a pretty exciting visual rendering of the bike, and I think that's cool. I've used them as visual aids for like Instagram and yeah, as social media and stuff. But then also, um, you know, if you're working with a customer, I think it's a really cool thing to get someone excited. You can imagine if you're trying to sell someone a bike and they're like thinking about it and then you do a rendering of what it could look like and it looks good. I think that'd be a really good way to get someone excited about the prospect of send, spending a serious amount of money buying a bike from you. And I think that functionality is worth a lot actually. One of the many valuable features is you can lay out things like, you know, fenders and racks and stuff. You can do water bottle cages. Every bike I've made has had water bottle mounts and you want it, you know, it depends what kind of frame and what school of thought, but if you want to get a low center of gravity, you want to get those water bottle cages as low as you can get them in the frame. Or on a road bike, if you're saving space for a frame pump or on an adventure bike, if you want room for a frame bag, you want to get those bottles placed just right and then you want to know where to drill the holes. Now, you can make the front triangle of the bike and then you can put on a water bottle cage and you can mark it with a sharpie and then you know where to drill. It's a lot easier to drill those holes before you weld the front triangle together then you don't have to use a right angle head drill to fit into close quarters and then you don't need to worry about the chips from the drill staying within the frame and rattling for the whole life of the frame if you drill that before you might or before you weld the tubes together your whole life is easier and by being able to make a mock-up is really helpful because you know as custom builders most bikes are one-offs and so um, you know, you want to know exactly the best fit and you can model that and like so many things right in the software. On more than one occasion, I've I've been like, damn, I wish BikeCAD had this feature or that feature. Then I emailed Brent and I said, hey, have you considered adding this to the to BikeCAD for a future iteration? And then he would very politely uh, respond and say, actually, it's already a feature in BikeCAD. He was like really polite about it. <laughs> He's like, actually, it's already part of BikeCAD. Let me show you how to do that. And he would explain it to me or he'd reference a YouTube video. And I found that to be true more than once. And so not only is it more feature rich than I think I realized when I bought it and then probably a lot of people give it credit for, but also, uh, you know, you have that kind of service and connection to the person who designed it. Uh, that's really a valuable relationship to have. I want to bring you in one of the things that that Brent released uh, since I bought it uh, is that this here is a Paragon Machine Works sliding dropout and it, when you go to the dropout dialog box there's a handful of dropouts that you can choose from and so for people who are designing with uh, different kinds of dropouts it's really helpful to be able to see that modeled on the screen especially if it's some dropouts are pretty straightforward and they're just like a little round, you know, a hooded dropout that's basically just a circle. Some of them are weirder shapes with long tabs and stuff to accommodate disc brakes. Those ones are nice to be able to model on the screen. When you open up the rider dialog box, there's all these uh, places that you can fill in all this information about your rider. And I think there's even, you can somehow turn on uh, sort of a biomechanical model of your rider and you can animate it so that it's pedaling. And I never use that too much. I think in the in the frame building world, the skills that I, there's some skills that I have more than others and I was never an expert of bike fit. You know, I, I, I tried to do a good job and get the job done. But I think if you were good at bike fit, that would help you sell bikes with your customer and when you have them in for a fitting to be then entering data directly into BikeCAD and to be modeling it up so that your customer can see what they look like on their bike. I think that's a really powerful sales tool. Just like it's for, for them to be able to get excited about the prospect of this future bike that doesn't exist yet. I think that that's exciting. And I, I not, not to say that um, when you sell stuff, you should just be trying to trick someone into, you know, thinking that you're more legitimate than you are. But I think this kind of tool makes you look legitimate. I think when you have actual like data points that you're entering into software and you have like measurements and you have formulas that relate, you know, the your, your pubic bone height and this inseam and that thing to formulas to give you like a ballpark idea of where to start from. I think that really, I think in practice it would help you more easily and more effectively design good bikes. And I think 
also it would illustrate to your customers that you take seriously what you do, you have the software to do the job, and you know how to use it. And I think that that, again, is like another valuable tool that's just built into the software. Brent Curry does not know that I'm making this video at this point. He didn't ask me to make this video. Uh, I, I hope he appreciates it, but um, you know, when I go to the trade shows, he's always a pal and I really like him. I really appreciate the software. I appreciate what he's doing for folks like us in the industry who are hobbyists or who are professionals, uh, who are just having fun with it. A lot of people use BikeCAD just in fitting studios to do bike fits. It's just great stuff. And so this is not a paid promotion. Uh, Brent, if you, wanna, if you wanna pay it forward and and show your appreciation somehow that's cool but um, but I just wanted to make this because I just really appreciate what Brent does and I think it's solid software and people should realize that it's it's more than just one little thing or another it's it's a powerful it's a powerful package I wonder what size frame Clem needs I'm gonna say probably a 55 centimeter top tube road bike huh yeah we're gonna get her modeled up in bike cad she'll be pedaling the bike it'll be super cute so uh just subscribe to the channel right clem yeah you're gonna want to subscribe thanks for watching